Hello, I'm Tom, and I'm going to spend the next 6 minutes and 40 seconds talking you through my pick of the best books on my bookshelf. 16 books in total, 15 on innovation plus a bonus on creativity, each of which gets 20 seconds. Fast pace, no bullet points, no digressions. These are the books that I use all the time, either as a reference for myself or for lending out to people new to innovation as a discipline. To those of you who don't know me, I've been working professionally in innovation since the 80s and am lucky enough to have done a master's degree in innovation from HEC Paris. For me, a decent library is essential to my growth and ability to perform. There's a saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And the only way you ever become that perfect student is by learning, either from experience, mistakes you make, but critically from others, and that typically means books. So on to the books. My first pick is Strategic Management of Technological Innovation, 2016, by Melissa Schilling. It's expensive, but definitely the most comprehensive coverage of the topic. This is the book to start with, and if you can only afford one, get this. Get a nice modern copy. The author's really good about updating the case studies. My second choice is The Innovator's Dilemma, 1997, by Clayton Christensen. Christensen's almost always worth reading. This book introduces the idea of disruptive innovation and the impact new competition has on established markets. Disruptive innovation changes markets. My next recommendation is Diffusion of Innovations, 1962 by Everett Rogers. This is the book which gave us the adoption curve and gave us the four factors which affect innovation adoption. The innovation itself, communication channels, time and prevailing social systems. Not a bad checklist to work through when anybody innovates. This next book's a bit of a catalogue. 10 Types of Innovation, 2013, surveyed more than 2,000 successful innovative organisations to give you a framework. Profit model, network, structure, process, product performance, product system, service, channel, brand and customer engagement. This next book is unashamedly a bit of a cheat, being a collection of 10 papers from the Harvard Business Review. There are some great reads here, including the paper that gave us the real win worth it framework, a classic paper on innovation traps, and another on innovation killers. You can dip into these short pieces often and they're eminently quotable. We're changing track a little bit now. No one can predict the future, but you can use some of the techniques from scenario planning to put yourself in the best possible position for whatever happens next. So two books, Strategic Reframing for the modern take on this, or the classic Scenarios, by the man who basically invented the idea for the best overall coverage. Coming from the same team as Scenario Planning is The Living Company by Ari Dehus. His big idea is that sustainable, long-term survival is dependent on the ability to learn how to learn. The standout quote is, the ability to learn faster than your competitors may be the only sustainable competitive advantage. Sometimes you have to fight political battles to get your ideas adopted. These next few books are all about that. Thinking Strategically, 1993, by Avinash Dixit, starts with the idea that people are rational actors, as smart as you, and operating in their own self-interest. Then act accordingly. A great intro to game theory. Influencing Within Organisations, 1996, by Andrzej Huczynski. Out of print now, but cheap second-hand copies are plentiful. Imagine if a heavyweight professor of organisational behaviour took all of the writing on how to be politically evil, Machiavellian and sneaky, and then wrote a how-to book. You don't have to imagine. And then we flip to the utterly wholesome Samuel B. Bacharach's Get Them On Your Side and Keep Them On Your Side from 2005. Great little books about the reality of horse trading favours and ensuring interest alignment with large projects. The title is super accurate. Use the techniques here to get allies and supporters. The fifth discipline from 1990 lists the five things you need to master to be an effective organisation. The real gem here, though, is the systems thinking part. If you get used to modelling organisations as systems, then you can pick them apart and innovate by rebuilding them. The field book has some great activities to do with teams and is a must-buy. For any innovator, giving a good presentation is key to getting your ideas across. Slideology by Nancy Duarte is a guide to giving a great talk to a group of people. But a lot of what we do is documents, not a document, not a presentation. PowerPoints meant to be read standalone. For this, you need Strategic Storytelling by Dave McKinsey. 
I have had my whole week saved so many times by Game Storming, 2010 by David Gray. There will be times when you're expected to lead a brainstorming session, take a whole group through thinking about an issue or problem, or simply team building. This book has 80 games you can use straight away to do exactly that. This next book is the OG Canvas book and has spawned its own little industry of books, some of which are much better than others. But this is the original, Business Model Generation, with its open source concept and simple graphical way of describing any business in an easy to discuss format, to must buy. There are lots of copies available second hand. What happens when you take a career philosopher and academic and then get them to work for a management consultancy? The answer is the management myth, 2010, by Matthew Stewart. He debunks and frankly kicks the heck out of so much of the received wisdom that you were taught at business school that your head will spin. It's an awesome and irreverent read. Finally, it's our bonus book on creativity. There's a myth that only some of us are creative, that it's the domain of special people. Not true. We can all do it. The key is hard work coupled with a few simple processes. The Creative Habit, 2006 by Twyla Tharp, is both a recipe book and a lifestyle guide. Now I realise I've listed a lot of books here, really a lot. Expensive, specialist books, and I feel kind of guilty. It's a significant investment if you're just starting out, but don't forget your local lending library. All of these books and more are available at your local public library. Join, use it. Libraries are awesome. I also buy second hand a lot.